In this video, we will be creating a belt linkage using the belt chain command. The first thing we want to do is create a sketch and then add some circles. These will allow our belt to actually attach to an entity within the sketch. I'm going to add four circles. Let's go ahead and put a diameter dimension on all four circles. And for this example, let's go ahead and put some dimensions and some relations on these. I chose specifically to not add a dimension to the smaller of the circles, and you'll see why towards the end of the lesson. From here, let's select one of our circles, and then locate the Blocks toolbar. If you don't already have the Blocks toolbar up on your screen, head up to the search bar and type Block, and then click the I. SolidWorks will then show you where it is located. And we want to make this circle a block. So by clicking Make Block and accepting the change, we now have a circle block. A sketch block is simply a collection of sketch entities that we want grouped together. There are many different uses for blocks, but today we're going to focus on the creation of a belt using them. After selecting the sketch entities and making them into a block, you'll notice that the circles became grayed out. This is good confirmation that the block was created and it can no longer change its diameter unless you explicitly click the Edit Block button. Once everything has its intended diameter and dimensions, and we added a new block for each of the circles in our sketch, it is now time to run our Belt Change command. Start by clicking the Belt slash Chain button on the block's toolbar. SOLIDWORKS then tells us we need to select a circle or arc to help the belt know which members it needs to pass around. I'm going to select this circle about the origin, then proceed in a clockwise motion selecting the remaining circles. Before accepting our new belt, you'll notice there are arrows on each of the blocks that are being used in the belt creation. By clicking these, you'll reorient which side of the block you want the belt to wrap around. My smallest block defaulted to wrapping around the entire block before moving along to the next one. We do not want this. So I'm going to click this arrow, and you'll see that it corrected itself to the exact position I intended. This can also be done by selecting an arc in the belt member box, and then selecting the flip belt side button just below it. You can also choose to reorder the way the belt goes around each of the blocks by simply clicking a member in the belt managers box and then just moving that particular block up or down, depending on where you want it. Once we have the belt in a correct orientation, there are a few other options SOLIDWORKS gives us to make our belt feel more complete. Right now our belt has zero thickness. So let's select the Use Belt Thickness checkbox and then set that to 5 millimeters. If you look over to where your sketch is, you'll now see an offset of half the thickness of the belt around the outside of each of the blocks. Another option we have is to make this a driving belt length. This will allow us to choose an appropriate length belt that we can more realistically purchase in a store. This is only possible when we leave one of the blocks not fully defined. I'll set mine to 340 millimeters and see what changes. We noticed that the block that was not fully defined had moved when we adjusted the belt length. Now, let's accept this belt and then leave the sketch. Now, to finish up this tutorial and our belt, Let's go ahead and add some thickness to this.
We are going to use a thin feature and set the type to mid-plane with a total thickness of 5 millimeters. And then we'll go ahead and accept this boss extrude. And then we are left with a solid body of the belt we created. Thank you so much for watching this basic tutorial on the belt chain command. And for more SolidWorks educational content, please subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel and visit us at hawkridgesys.com.